This is Macro Voices, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. And let's get to that chart deck. Listeners, you'll find the download link for the post-game chart deck in your Research Roundup email. If you don't have a Research Roundup email, it means you're not yet registered at macrovoices.com. Just go to our homepage, macrovoices.com, and click on the red button over Lynn's picture saying, looking for the downloads. Eric, let's cover crude oil starting with the EIA inventory. EIA printed a drawdown of 600,000 barrels on crude oil inventory. Didn't pilfer anything more out of the SPR. That's two weeks in a row of no drawdowns out of the SPR. Hopefully we'll continue on that streak. Cushing, Oklahoma, drawing down 2.6 million barrels. That's another big drawdown there. Gasoline, drawing down 786,000 barrels. Distillates, drawing down 245,000 barrels. U.S. production, ticking down 100,000 barrels to 12.2 million barrels. Tape action, well, the rally was already in progress before the data. After the data, it kind of stumbled. We'll see what happens. Right now, the 55-week moving average at 79, spot 97, is co-located with round number resistance at $80. So are we going to get above $80? That's what's holding us back right now. Uh, I think probably so, but I wouldn't be surprised if we go back and retest the breakout zone. That's the 200-day continuation moving average, just around $77. So I think maybe a dip down to 77 before this continues. Now, the thing that could completely corrupt this rally is if we get new macro data that suggests, okay, the recession (laughs) really is still coming and we are going to see the stock market collapse and the blow off top that Darius Dale predicted in the stock market and everything turns around and it's all to the downside. Uh, We could get easily get back to new lows if that happened. But for now, it looks like the rally has legs. Yeah, on page two, we have that chart on crude oil, and I have that 200-day moving average that we were highlighting last week. You can see we definitively broke out above that 200-day moving average, though I don't think that this is just all upside on oil. Not that there isn't a new bull trend potentially underway, but typically as we approach previous highs and after such a clean run higher, typically the rallies are checked. And so I wouldn't be surprised at some point here if, uh, you know, we saw something anywhere from a two to five dollar pullback in crude but so long as the bulls uh, defend it and buy dips and uh, get it back up to the highs in a reasonable period of time that will continue to support the idea that there's a a new bull trend forming and then we could talk about crude oil returning back to fourth quarter of last year levels which was around around the 90s and so uh, it's certainly um, the first time in a while that crude oil's behaving half decently let's see whether this turns into a new bull trend. Now let's move on to equities here. Eric, what are you looking at? My chart shows R1 resistance at 46.12, and so far that's been what's holding the rally down. As I've said several times in recent weeks, the trend is up, the trend is strong, and the trend makes absolutely no sense to me personally. John Hussman, who called the 2000 and 2008 bubbles, also says this trend doesn't make sense to him. He says it would take a full 64% down from here in order to set up a return to historically normal valuations, a buy-the-dip opportunity, so to speak. So according to John Hussman, surely an abrupt change of direction is imminent. Well, okay, as much as I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Hussman and side with the bears and the fundamentals, the fact is that the market doesn't see it that way, or at least it hasn't seen it that way yet. If that uh, reversal is imminent, we haven't seen the signs, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Right now, the trend is up. Well, uh, let's uh, get into the different levels here. Nick, uh, I know you're watching the S&P 500, and what levels are the options markets showing you? Spot price right now is 45.65. We have an implied move for the August 18th OPEX of 100 points. So the upper expected move is 46.65, and the lower expected move is 44.65. Um, right now, the call wall is right above at 4,600, and we have a put wall below at key support of 4,500. Next levels of support are at 4,350 and 4,300. Right now, I'm thinking that if we break that call wall area at 4,600, we get a blow off top to around 4,650, 4,670 perhaps before a slight pullback. What are your thoughts here, Patrick? 
Well, you know, uh, to me, there is obviously the uh, March of 2022 high that we're directly testing here in the post FOMC. Clearly, what Powell was saying was not a surprise to the market and certainly not at least initially a catalyst uh, for a market reversal. Here in the post ECB period, the market continues higher. And so to me, the path of least resistance remains higher. Now, while we are quite overbought uh, and inevitably this rally will get checked with some sort of a correction, uh, it's clear, at least initially, that the first wave of earnings and central banks are not the catalyst for that turn. And so at this moment, the magnet has to be its uh, 2021 highs in that 47 to 4,800 area. While, uh, in that, like I was saying earlier, I think that there's going to be a, a deep mean reversion of this rally once uh, we uh, have some sort of a blow off top. But at this stage, it doesn't look like anything is stopping this from tacking on an extra 100 plus S&P points. But we'll certainly see whether that momentum follows through. What's interesting, though, Nick, is is that uh, the Nasdaq has not broken yet to a higher high uh, like the S and P has from the, its previous week. Uh, what are you watching for on the queues? So interesting, you mentioned that because right now the call wall is at four hundred, just above where we're at right now. The spot price is about three eighty on on QQQ. The implied move for the August eighteenth OPEX is plus minus thirteen points. So the upper expected move would be three ninety three, and the lower expected move would be three sixty seven. So right now, looking at that call wall at 400, just above that is all-time highs at 408, 409 on queues. Um, it's possible we push that level as obviously if we break higher, it's not very far away. So if we do get that blow off top, it's possible we see that all-time high tested, maybe even broken perhaps. But again, I am more bearish on big tech in the longer term. Midterm, hard to say. I prefer to play the small caps in the form of the Russell instead. You know, I think uh, the interesting thing to watch will be whether or not we see uh, some sort of uh, sector rotation in the uh, the post earnings period. Obviously, Apple and Amazon and a few of the other big ones are still up in terms of their earnings next week. But will we see a scenario where uh, the S and P, uh, because of a, a broad rally in in a lot of the sectors that lagged, continues higher? But we see that uh, there's a lot of rotation out of the tech into in diversifying out into a lot of the more cheaper assets out there. It's certainly the thing to watch. One, one of the interesting things, though, that we're seeing here in the post FOMC here, Nick, is volatility pretty much right back down to uh, year lows. I mean, we're, we're seeing the VIX now under 13 down in that 12 handle, uh, just volatility, at least on the 30 day VIX, which is looking at the implieds going into um, the remainder of the summer are, are very, very low. Uh, what's your thinking here on, on vol? Yeah, Patrick. So right now with the VIX at around 13, the expected moves each day are about 0.7% roughly in broad markets. And as we've seen in the past, these lower levels often are met with violent rises due to some catalyst event. That catalyst event remains to be seen what it actually is. But again, selling premium right now, especially on the put side, is more risky, I would say. And it's probably smart to be more cautious as we rise in markets because, again, the asymmetry of risk gets worse and worse as we go higher and likewise as the VIX goes lower. Now on page seven here, we have the US dollar index. Eric, what are your thoughts here? Well, we saw the breakdown below the bottom of the consolidation range. Then we got the predictable rally back up to retest the breakdown zone, this time testing it as resistance rather than support. Check, that all happened. Now the question is whether that level holds as resistance, in which case we could be at the beginning of a really big move down on the dollar, or it could be that that was a false breakdown and we're about to rally up into the high end of that prior consolidation range. Both of those scenarios are still possible. The, the jury is still out, but I'm leaning toward the former. A couple more sessions and we'll know where the next leg is headed. Well, Eric, it's interesting here whether or not the dollar remains down here below 102. All of those key lows at the, through uh, the first and second quarters of the year established a support that was broken. And if the dollar here remains in this uh, downtrend and we see breakdowns maybe down to 98 or even lower, that can uh, spell uh, obviously weakness for the dollar, but it would certainly be a bullish tailwind for a number of the different cross assets that uh, 
tend to benefit from U.S. dollar weakness. Uh, will be really interesting to see as uh, we, you know, have a, a couple trading sessions after all the monetary policy releases, whether or not that uh, U.S. dollar downtrend continues. And moving on to page eight, we have the gold futures chart. What are you guys thinking here? Well, since I have a big long position on, it's nice to see the market looking like the bottom may already be in for this correction at 1900. But the reason I'm still skeptical is I think the Fed is likely to prove more hawkish on rates than the market is expecting. Just a couple more surprise hawkish rate hikes could shake the confidence out of this gold market and put us right back in the middle of the 1800s. But that hasn't happened yet. And until it does, this chart's looking pretty bullish to me. Yeah, what I wanted to do here was just uh, zoom out on this chart. And I wanted to really capture almost five years of data uh, on here. And it really shows uh, that 2020 and 2022 high of gold that was tested again this year, uh, just over 2000. So overall, gold has held very close to its all time highs. And this 2000 level in my mind is, is a nice clean round number to watch. If for whatever reason gold is given that push uh, above that 2000, level it will uh, draw some money flow and that's going to be a real interesting moment to see whether or not this is uh, the period from which gold can make that press to all-time new highs that's uh, a, a little bit early but overall the pattern of higher highs higher lows and the trend toward its highs remains there so the question is is what catalyst will emerge to potentially uh, drive flows and cause gold to make that move it's certainly uh, something that I'm going to keep an eye out on there well it I wanted to wrap up with is uh, I know Lynn talked about um, uh, uranium and what I want just have here is that Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. This is the one that trades in on the TSX. And um, we see uh, it upticked a little bit. It obviously had a little bit of a deeper pullback than the U308 contract uh, was trading at a bit of a discount, but it's turning up and most uranium stocks actually continue to be well accumulated and in a, a good clean trend. It'll be interesting to see whether or not this uh, uh, Sprott Physical Trust can get back toward the 17 half 18 level that were the highs of, of this year and whether or not it sets up for a, a retest of that $20 level in the coming weeks and months. And one way or another, the chart generally continues to look very bullish. Finally, on page 10, I wanted to just talk about this Invesco Agricultural Fund ETF DBA. And while a lot of the grains like wheat and, and corn remain uh, muddled, obviously off of their lows, other uh, key components of this, uh, uh, like coffee and cocoa and sugar futures, continue to actually do very well. And uh, we see this pushing toward its 52-week uh, high. It'll be really interesting to see whether or not this entire commodity uh, basket can actually push push to all-time new highs. It'll be uh, certainly something that would uh, start being talked about if it uh, was underway. Folks, if you enjoy Patrick's chart decks, you can get them every single day of the week with a free trial of Big Picture Trading. The details are on the last pages of the slide deck or just go to bigpicturetrading.com. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. 
Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.